everyone. Welcome, welcome. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. I just want to take the time to thank Anne and the entire board at Restored Hope Network for giving me this opportunity. Um, this opportunity is particularly special to me because when the Lord was calling me to start coming out in 2016, I didn't know any other ministries um, like that. I didn't know any other ministries that was supporting those who desire freedom from homosexuality. And so here I am with this vision God has given me, and I'm thinking I'm like Moses, I mean, I'm sorry, like Noah, building the ark, We've never seen rain, building something new, and the Lord is like, girl, this thing been here, we've been had ministries. <laughs> and so, um, but in that process, I saw a ministry at the time, it was called Hope for Wholeness, and they were having a conference here at Ridgecrest, and I brought a mentor, uh, a girl that I was mentoring, the very first girl that I ever mentored, I brought her with me, and I said, I don't know where Asheville is, but we are going to go, we're going to find our way there, we didn't have, we were, I had just quit my job to pursue ministry full time, so I didn't have the funds to, um, pay for the registration, but they had an option where you could pay for one day at a time, and it was $50, and I was like, okay, between the two of us, we can find $100. So we flew here from Dallas to Ridgecrest, found our way up the Black Mountains to here, and we were met with just love, and I just cried the whole weekend because for the first time, I saw a tangible evidence of the vision that God was giving me, and they actually offered us a scholarship to stay the entire weekend for free. So it's just, it was in that conference that the Lord confirmed the vision that he was giving me and it was my very first time being introduced to a ministry of this sort so to be brought back here for the first time as a keynote speaker is just like God is so funny right um, <laughs> and so I'm just so thankful for Restored Hope I, I am grateful for Ann and the entire board for giving me this opportunity I hope that you all enjoy what the Lord um, has for us today. I think you're in for a treat. Um, he has given us a demonstration that I will do um, throughout the course of my uh, keynote. So I just want to share a little bit about myself as well as the ministry. Our MC, she shared a beautiful biography, a biography of me. And so, um, like she said, I experienced childhood abandonment as a young age. My parents divorced when I was around three or four. And my father was dealing with his own childhood trauma that led him to several types of addiction. And in that, my parents, um, they had a very abusive marriage, just dysfunctional arguments, abusive, and I don't remember a lot of that. A lot of this was or things that were told to me, but when they divorced, my heart and my emotions remembered the separation. So I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. My dad was living in, he went to the military to try and clean his life up, and he moved to San Antonio, Texas. So there was a big difference between the states, and my mom wasn't particularly comfortable with me traveling down there very often. So I went there one month out of the year to visit my father. And then there were several years in between that where I had no communication with him at all. And then that time he had gotten remarried, he had had several other children. So here I am, 10 year old Tamika feeling replaced, you know? And so I was the baby, now he has a new family. And so when he came back into my life around 10, that's when I started to spend one month with him. So I didn't know that those things were taking root in my heart. and. And it wasn't until college, when I gave my life to Christ, that he started bringing up those daddy wounds and those daddy issues. And it was a very painful journey. But what was part of my deliverance was um, healing unforgiveness, forgiving my father. And in the process of forgiving him, I didn't know how much the enemy can keep us bound through unforgiveness. But if you are holding on to unforgiveness, seek the Lord to give you the grace to forgive. It doesn't mean that what, was, what happened to you wasn't wrong but it does mean that you need to be right with the Lord and healed in your heart so you can be free to live in relationship with him and with others. And so after being able to forgive my father, um, the Lord then led me to live with him. Now that took forgiveness to a whole nother level, right? Cause I'm like, I can say I forgive him. I cried the tears, I repented. And then it's like, you wanna move to Texas? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't. And 
And the funny thing is, my dad even said to me, he said, I know you're going to live with me one day because at, at a season in his life, he did give his life to the Lord and he did repent and he was serving in the church. And in that time, he said that the Lord had given him a promise saying that um, one day she will come back for you. I will send her back to you when she's an adult. So he would tell me that and I would tell him he's listening to the wrong God because <laughs> I still had some bitterness in my heart. I still had a level of unforgiveness. I, I wasn't ready to like completely because, you know, when you're around that person every day, you have to walk out this forgiveness thing. So I moved with him um, 25 years old and I turned into a three year old moving with him. It was like all of my childhood wounds just resurfaced. But he was so gracious with me and wanting to restore what was lost. So through that experience, I spent my first Christmas, birthday, holidays, things with him at 25, and the Lord was able to really heal that father abandonment wound. So fast forward to 2016, the Lord is like, okay, we're, you know, dealt with that. Now I need you to answer your call to ministry. And he spoke to me and said that there were LGBT, that he was calling me to the LGBTQ community, and that there were pastors, leaders, apostles, teachers, preachers in the LGBTQ community that could not answer their call to God because the church was not equipped. And so um, just to backtrack a little bit in terms of, and when I was in college, there was a young lady that struggled with transgenderism and her pastor asked me to mentor her. So through that mentorship, the Lord actually started revealing to me how to help her. Because again, at that time, I didn't know how to help anyone. I didn't even know that people were praying to be delivered. So when she approached me and I told, actually told her that I didn't know how to help her. <laughs> and so um, the Lord quickly convicted me of that. And um, eventually he started to reveal to me that I'm going to call you to help her and I'm going to show you how to help her. And so I discipled her. I walked with her every day until I graduated college. She eventually threw away her male clothing. She wanted to embrace a more feminine. We talked about, she went through deliverance. We talked about healing her root causes. She had struggled um, because of sexual abuse and things like that. And so I was able to walk with her along with the Lord and um, walk her through a place of healing. So through that experience, um, the Lord was just showing me that this is what the ministry you will have. Those are the services that you will offer. Discipleship, mentorship, we will offer um, clothing distribution for those that are detransitioning and there will be just a safe space for them to be able to process the things that they are needing healing from. So all of that, if you want to hear more about that story, you can follow up with me after this because I can go on and on about that and I don't want to miss out on the things that God has to say to you all today. So, um, like I said, so Coming Out Incorporated is the name of the ministry, and we are a grassroots ministry. Our resource table is over here. If you would like to support us, there are some QR codes. You can just pull up your phone, take pictures, and be able to um, go to the different websites. If you'd like to support us financially, there are ways to give over there as well. Um, so I just want to thank you all, you know, for that. So, okay, so... The word that the Lord gave me today is called being rooted and grounded in love. So I have to share the story of how he gave me this topic. So although I had forgiven my father and I had walked through the healing process with the Lord, I still struggle in intimate relationships with men. Actually, that's where my daddy wounds were most exposed. Um, I struggle with emotional dependencies. I struggle with um, anxiety, a fear of abandonment. If they did not call me back in a certain amount of time, in a certain amount of days, respond, it was like my whole entire being would just catch on fire. I would be so anx anxious that I would be abandoned or that they would just stop talking to me. Because in my childhood, there would be times where I would hear from my father for extended periods of time, and then there would be time where I wouldn't hear from him for several years. So it created this attachment, insecure attachment um, that I had. So when I went out to start and try dating, then it, it came up. There's this fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, anxiety when they're gone, anxiety. And so it kind of came off as a very clingy, needy type of person, but not because I wanted to be, but it was just what would have soothed that fear, right? So here I am, 35 years old, and I'm still struggling with that. And I'm like, God, what the heck? Like, I'm never going to get married. <laughs> so, and he's, <laughs> and 
And so I'm like, how can you know you have to fix this? And one day he, I just sat with him and he, he said, I want to show you what's at the foundation of your heart. And I go, okay, we've uprooted a few things, but let's get down to the bottom of this so that we can get free. And he said, at the very foundation of your heart, you just feel unloved. And it sounds very simple, but in the moment, it sounded extremely profound, and I just broke. He said, even in your personal relationships, even in your friendships, even in your, your parent relationships, you simply feel unloved. And so I cried, and I weeped, and I weeped, and I'm like, God, do a miracle, heal my heart. And he's like, no, I want you to walk this thing out. And so he told me he wanted me to do an exegetical study on his love. So I'm like, okay, and I'm going to be a Bible scholar, okay? So, um, so within that, he said, I want you to do an in-depth study of my love. And it's going to heal the wound, the feeling of unlove. You need to really know. You can't heal that wound with other relationships. You can't continue to put a Band-Aid over that wound through different um, habits or keeping yourself busy. You have to allow my love to come in and come to the foundation of your heart to uproot everything else. And so that is where this story and topic began for me. And so... Um, Hold on one second. So I'm going to actually share with you some of the findings I discovered during that study. And the study is an ongoing study, so it's not finished. I don't think I'll ever finish this study because God is so infinite. Um, however, um, I'm going to... Hold on one second. I'm going to read the scripture that he's given us. And so it says, for this reason, it's going to be in Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. It says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the goodness of God. And so that scripture, I could really end the sermon here because that scripture just says so much. And it was a prayer that Apostle Paul was praying over the church of Ephesus and over the Ephesians. So, Father God, I just want to pray right now that your presence will come. I pray that I will decrease and that you will increase and that you will be glorified through this message. I pray for the hearts of those that are listening and the ears that those are listening, that you will open deaf ears, that you, they will be able to hear what you're speaking to them, that they will have their hearts wide open to be able to receive your love, to be able to receive your healing, and to be able to receive your word. So we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And we just pray that you give me the words and that there be understanding and connection and comprehension. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So while I was studying this, I learned that um, this Apostle Paul was actually praying to the church of Ephesus in this. And so he said, I bow my knees. So this was a prayer. So I went to God. I'm like, you know, why was it so necessary for him to pray this particular prayer over Ephesus? He didn't pray it over every church. And so I was led to the book of Revelations. If we fast forward now to the book of Revelations, we know Apostle Paul is writing a second time to the church of Ephesus. But at this time, he's calling them the loveless church. And he's telling them that they have lost sight of their first love. And so what happened in between him praying that they comprehend God's love, him praying that they be rooted in God's love, now in Revelations, he's saying, you've lost sight of your first love. So what happened in that process? And so I learned that the church of Ephesus had gotten into a place where they had become complacent in their relationship with the Lord. They were just going through the motions. They were fixated on religion and checking off their boxes. And so how many times do we get into that kind of space? We're just going through our mundane work, church, home, work, church, home, and we're not communing with God. We've lost sight of the passion. Usually when we first, you meet someone who just got saved, 
two weeks ago, they are like on fire for God. You know what I'm telling you? Like you want to get a person to shut up, they will not quit telling you the goodness of the Lord and the testimony that of healing that they've brought into, he's brought into their lives. And so, but sometimes along the line, we go through things, we get hurt, we have trauma that come up, we get frustrated with people, we have church hurt, we have different things that can come and disrupt that original passion that we had. And so this is what happened to the church of Ephesus. They had lost sight of the zeal and the passion that they first had when the church was founded by Apostle Paul. So he's writing to them and he's telling them in Revelation 2, 4, and 5, it says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first work, or else I will come too quick to you quickly and remove your lampstand or your anointing from its place unless you repent. And so I'm never, I've never been one of those repent people. However, the only way to get back that passion is through repentance and reconciliation. And so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that could be at the foundation of our heart. Some of the things that we could be rooted and grounded in that could be producing a spoiled fruit in our life or producing habits or um, producing things in our life that are separating us from God. And so what does it mean to be rooted and grounded? So I had to look up the definition, and I have a bunch of definitions here that you all can glean from. But for the most part, being rooted means to be established deeply and firmly in something. It means having its root planted or fixed in the earth. It means to take root. It's the bottom or the lowest part of a thing. And so when we're grounded, it means that... Um, it's to lay the lowest part of a structure. It means that it's stable and secure and movable. You can't move it. So when something is rooted and grounded, it's, it's at the foundation, it's the very bottom, and it's stable. You can't just knock it over and it'll move over. You can't blow the wind and it'll just, you know, leave. You ha it has to, um, it's the foundation of a thing. So some of the things that are at the foundation of our, our hearts, if it's not love, it's really the thing that is producing fruit in our lives. And if it's not love, it's producing a fruit that is not like God. And so I created this tree here. And so this is kind of what it looks like, if you all can see that, what it looks like when we are not rooted and grounded in love. So if you could, yes. So I have some things here at the foundation of our heart. So um, Ashley speaks about generational curses. So we have that the bo very bottom um, at some of the things that could be at the root. We have unforgiveness, abandonment, faulty belief systems, um, legalism, religion. How many of us grew up in a church that was extremely re uh, legalistic? I grew up in a more traditional church. Wearing pants in church was a sin. Going to the movies was a sin. Um, everything was a sin, okay? <laughs> My, my first time going, my first time going bowling was in college, and I thought I had just broke loose. You know, it was just, <laughs> I finally, and it's like they were, all of my friends were just laughing, like Tamika, really, you've never been bowling. But at the time, that was the foundation of Christianity that I had. My first time learning about discipleship and relationship with God and with Jesus was in college. I went to church with my mom. I think we were at church every night, every night, except for Saturday. And that was choir rehearsal, so I was still there, you know, because she was in the choir. And so, but when I got to college, I, I didn't know anything about Jesus. And this is, I'm going to tell you how how much I didn't know. I remember sitting down one day, and it says I was really like, I felt a tug on my heart, and I Googled, how is Jesus and God the same? Which one was born? <laughs> I didn't even know. I sat in church for 18 years, and I didn't even know which one walked the earth, which I didn't know the difference. I'm like, I know they're the same, but which one? And so it was, I was completely confused, and the Lord began to have to uproot that religion from me, and it was very painful because our identities can be bound in that. Your parents did their best to lay a foundation and try to lay a foundation of faith. However, if it's... Um, if it's rooted in religion, it, the Lord really needs to break that off so that you can have an intimate relationship with him. So that was very painful. Then we have rejection here. We have some abandonment and we have politics, not to step on any toes, but I know some that their conservatism has become more intimate than their intimacy with the Lord. And so we just want to make sure that we're keeping that balance. Um, we're using our faith to impact politics, but the politics aren't taking over our hearts. And so... I have this tree here, and then we have the 
trunk of the tree, we have pride going up the tree. Because these things, whether they are, it's intentional or it's conscious, it, it leads to pride. Even if you're trying to protect yourself, not trusting God is a form of pride. And so um, these things lead to an area of pride that then produces a fruit. And I don't know how well you could see this photo, but those apples are actually little rotten apples with little worms coming out. So <laughs> um, the Lord is like, I just want this tree to look so like gross. So it has like some, some of the fruit that we have here. We have lust. We have some relational dysfunction. We have a sla being a slave to sin, uh, rebellion, brokenness, addictions, idolatry, control, torment, identity confusion, suicidal thoughts, powerlessness, depression, fear. So those are just a few of the things. We have anxiety. Some of the things that can be the fruit that can produce in our lives when we are rooted and grounded in these things that need to be uprooted. So whenever I was, um, the Lord was giving me this, one, I was riding in a car one day and the Holy Spirit said to me, um, there are so many people in the body of Christ that are still rooted and grounded in church culture and religion. And he said to me, I'm going to say it like he said it, but he said, and I want to uproot that thing. So, <laughs> and so, to the, <laughs> so the hashtag, the hashtag, if you are good, if you are on Facebook, Instagram, and you are tagging about this sermon, it's going to be hashtag uproot that thing. And I want everybody. <laughs> so I want everybody at the count of three. You're going to, I'm not going to be the only one uprooting that thing. So you guys are going to too. So on the count of three, we're all going to say it at the same time. Okay. One, two, three. Uproot that thing. Yes. Nah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Let me figure out where I was, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay. So, I am going to do a live demonstration. And we have some items over here. The Lord was so gracious for us to get. Um, okay, so, I may have to take my computer with me. So can you play the video? I don't want to stand in the way. We have, I have a short video and then I'm going to do the demonstration here. So I have, it's, it's going to be the next slide, I think. Yeah. So this is a video of someone uprooting a tree. And so I wanted to start at 128, please. One minute and 28 seconds, and then you can start at, stop it at two minutes. It's only going to be, keep going, keep going, keep going, getting warmer, getting there, getting there, getting there. No, it's good. Good. Right there. So I'm just going to play 30 seconds of this. You can stop it. You can stop it. So <laughs> I just wanted to show that. So I wanted to show that. That was actually part of my study. The Lord had me look up what it looks like because sometimes, well, I don't want to say sometimes, all the time, it is extremely painful and it is extremely hard when God is uprooting something. And I just wanted to show just how difficult it is to uproot a tree. Now, the first part of this video, you're going to see him wrapping the metal ropes around and the chains, and they had that tree secure so it can be uprooted out of the ground. But they, And they had a truck that was pulling these um, chains. And so just if you can get a visual of how hard it is to uproot a tree, maybe it can come for your heart that this is a hard process. So I'm not here saying this is easy just give it to God and move on. No, it's very hard. When he's digging, he's digging out. She said this was kind of actually shared. I was so happy with some of you were preaching my sermon, girl. And so... Um, when Ashley said that was kind of one of the darkest times when the Lord was going deep in her roots. And so it is extremely hard. And so I just wanted to show that video to kind of give an example that you can see that it is difficult. And so I'm going to do here. We have some 
gardening things going on here. So I am going to transform into the gardener. Okay, so bear with me. You know, the Lord is our vine dresser and he wants to. So I have my Lowe's. Yes, so you guys tell Lowe's I need to cut my check. Free, free advertisement. So we have some free advertisement here. So I'm going to see if I can put my handy dandy glasses on. Let's see if I can get this. I don't know if it'll work. We'll just have to sit it there. Okay, and so I have my gloves, my gardening gloves. Put those on. Got to get ready to dig, dig deep. And then I have some tools here. So I don't know the name of these tools. If you are a gardener, you can educate me later. We have, <laughs> but I'm just gonna, we have some scissors. <laughs> that I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have some scissors. We have our handy dandy shovel. Then we have our three prong fork rake. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm going to have to take this out of here. Sorry. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go and I'm going to attempt to uproot this plant. Now, when God was giving me this vision, I pictured a plant that was dry and decrepit, um, that looked like it was wilting. And so I didn't, I flew out from out of town, so I envisioned myself like buying a plant and letting it sit out, dry out for two weeks. And I realized I can't bring a plant on a plane. So <laughs> once I got here last night, Julie was so sweet. She took me on some errands and I just heard Walmart. And I, and she, and I said, Julie, I need a plant. She's like, oh, I brought these beautiful plants from Lowe's. And they, and I said, no, those plants will be too pretty. I need one that is, looks like, you know, they're decrepit, they're, they're dying. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> and then so we got there and this one was just law. Like you can count on Walmart to have a dead plant. <laughs> So I was like, yes, Lord, I didn't, I didn't have to do anything special. It was already dying. So, and then we went to Lowe's to get the rest of the tools and you hear the birds chirping and the plants growing and it's just fruitful and multiplying and Walmart is just, you know, it's a little, a little special here. So... So, we're going to pretend that these leaves are our fruit. If you could actually pull up that tree demonstration, I mean the tree picture, please. Is, that is kind of what we're demonstrating here. So, I have written on here, you can't really see, but I did write with permanent marker um, some of the fruit that produces in our life. So, we have some things on here. We have suicidal thoughts. We have pornography addiction, we have fear, we have um, shame, hopelessness, anxiety, same-sex attractions, lust, um, slave to fear, we have pride and relational dysfunction, perfectionism, comparison, competition. Ooh, we have a lot of things going on here. So we're trying to walk through life and work our jobs and parent our families and be spouses and this is the fruit that we're producing. And it makes it extremely difficult. And so unless you really get down to uproot the things that are at the foundation of your heart, you find it extremely difficult to be whole and extremely difficult to live out the call that God has on your life. And so we're going to uproot now. I have some seeds planted in here. Okay. They're not, you'll see, they're kind of like seeds. So we'll see if we can find some. I don't know. So we're going to do some digging. See if we have anything. Okay, we have one seed came up. Let's see if I can open this. I want to get. You know, I was gonna get my nails done, and I didn't have time to get my nails done. And the Lord is like, "Girl, you're gonna be playing in dirt." So it didn't even matter. So okay, so the first seed, we have our political affiliations that have maybe become an idol, and we're being more rooted in that than love. So we're gonna just dump that. Not that you don't want to have political beliefs that are rooted in faith, but you don't want them to be more rooted than love. Okay? So, then we're going to dig some more. Let's do some more digging. Okay, we have another seed here. 
let's see what this is. We have, this is gonna be, all right, it says, uh, I can't even read it. Lord Jesus, okay, I'm gonna have to, gloves, unforgiveness. I have unforgiveness. That's a big one. That was at the root of my heart and keeping me bound. And right. so let's see. We have some more. Let's see what we got here. The volunteer team, you'll have a job up here for you to clean up, <laughs> clean up all of our dirt. So dig in. Now I know I put some more seeds in here. They might be a little deeper. Hope I see one. Here we go. Let's see what that one is. Who gardens? Who's a gardener in here? Okay, how do you work these gloves? Because <laughs> how do you do this? Like <laughs> this is who this ain't my thing. Okay. So whew. all right, so we have here faulty belief systems. So what are you believing? that is not rooted in God's love? What are you believing about God? What, have you, what are you believing about yourself? What are you believing about your struggle um, that is not biblically sound, um, that is keeping you bound and producing rotten fruit in your life? So we got some roots, some real roots coming up, if you can see that as I'm digging. This plant didn't know that this was gonna be the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I have here, we have, ooh, this is, this is one. This is one, trauma. Ooh, how many times have our trauma snuck up and just took over our lives, took over our entire identity, took over how we treat others, took over how we relate to God, and just really took in over our lives. Um, a lot of us are, are still rooted in our childhood trauma or unresolved trauma or new trauma. Trauma doesn't stop when you get old. So I have some more here. And we have... Let's see what this is. This is gonna be my one of my roots, abandonment. And we have some abandonment. If you struggle with childhood abandonment, your parents divorced, mom left or dad left, or even a word that was spoken that made you feel unsafe and you're in or emotionally unavailable parent. Your parent was there physically, but they may not have been emotionally available or they dismiss your feelings. They didn't validate how you felt and you felt abandoned by them in that moment. Or they had their own trauma that they were trying to, that led them to addictions or that they were trying to cope with and they weren't able to be as present or available for you. And so we have that abandonment that we got to uproot because God don't have no orphans. He's a father, he's a good father and he, he says that in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he says that even when mother and father forsake thee, he will take care of you. He will take you in. So if you struggle with abandonment, talk to your father in heaven. He can heal that wound. I know it. Okay, we got another seed and we got some roots, some real roots coming up from this plant. So, all right, I don't want to get dirt in my hair. Golly. <laughs> So let's see what this one is. Oh, this is a big one. Rejection. Ooh, child. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have a moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, because that rejection wound, it's, it's as painful as the abandonment wound. Um, and they kind of pair with each other sometimes and play on our hearts. Many of us, or many of you that either struggle 
with homosexuality, you may have experienced some rejection from the church or from your families or from society. Um, and God is a healer of that. We may have experienced or taken on a spirit of rejection from our childhood trauma. A lot of these roots, if you look at, if you remember the video, those roots were so intertwined. They were so connected and they grew and they grew stronger. And so that's the same thing with these, um, seed, these seeds in here. They grow and the roots become intertwined. So our trauma, our abandonment, rejection and the triggers and everything is just like intertwined and so we have to tear those things apart and uproot everything to be able to be made whole so let's see I don't know if I have any more seeds in here I may have a few more I don't know we're gonna get this plant up out of here though okay so let's see All right, I need y'all to chant or something while I'm uprooting this. We need uproot that thing. One, two, three. <laughs> yes. Okay, we have another seed. <laughs> there we go. We need it. We need the Holy Ghost right here. So let's see. <laughs> let's see what this is going to say. This one says, lovelessness, feeling unloved. So no wonder that one's so hard to find. I tried to really bury that at the bottom. Um, so we have some, let's see if this tree is, no, still not coming out. Now look at this, I just wanna see. So we uprooted all of this trauma, unforgiveness, abandonment, rejection, and the tree still can't come out. We still, you still got this fruit. We still have these struggles. It's like, Lord, I didn't dealt with 25 things. What else is down there? What else could you possibly be trying to get to? And so he's digging. He's digging. And he's like, there's still more. There's something else. I got to get out. What is it? Oh, I just want to go on with my life. <laughs> And he's like, this is culture. How many times have we taken on the identity that culture says, or taken on a way of living that is culture, not kingdom culture? And so we are meaning the world and the culture that is established in the world and in our country. And sometimes our Ethnic, ethnic background can become a culture, uh, whether you're black or Mexican or Hispanic or white or whatever. Sometimes those cultural things can take precedence over our relationship with God. You can say, well, this ain't the way the Mexicans do it. In Mexico, we did it this way. Or this ain't the way the black folks do it. This ain't the way that the whites do it. Or however, whatever your culture, the Irish, the Polish, whatever it is, the Asian, sometimes we can be more rooted in the culture that was established for our nationality then taking on the culture of Jesus in the kingdom culture when we get adopted into Christ we're adopted into a new family and our culture has be, has to be stripped off of us and we have to adapt to the culture of the kingdom and there is a whole new way of living in our culture block oh you have something to say block and God is like forgive forgive 70 times 7 and we're like block <laughs> you know culture tells you you know not to be vulnerable women men can't be vulnerable men can't share their hurts they can't cry culture will tell you that and God is like you're my little boy come to papa come share me with me your hurts and your pains come sit on my lap cry with me and then you you know young women can't have to have this version of femininity that's unrealistic and so we take on those things and identity that the Lord never set out for us to have because of culture. And we want to fit in and be with the generation that's coming. But God is like, nope, uproot that thing. Go ahead. <laughs> so let's see. We're digging. Let's see. Can this thing still come out? Nope. Lord, we got to get this up out of here now. I don't need a. Let's see. I don't think anything else is in here. It might be. Not sure. Try. Now, we still can't get it out. Oh, guess what? You know what? It's something else. Good God, Lee. Oh, 
what else is this? God, what else could you be doing? I'm just done. And all the way at the bottom we have generational curses. Generational curses. My dad was an alcoholic and a drug addict. That doesn't mean I have to be one. Or my mother or father or not speaking of me personally, but anyone's parent that battle with a uh, pornography addiction, don't have to be you. Battle with homosexuality, doesn't have to be you. Battle with unforgiveness and legalism and religion, don't have to be you. And so just as the curses follow the children up to the third generation, the blessings follows much further and much more. And so we want to uproot those generational curses because those are the things that are going to pull you back. Just like Ashley said, you're going to try to take four steps forward and those generational curses will take you ten steps back. So we're going to try to get this up out of here. I think that should be the last one. Look at that. Look at that. Look at God. Look at him. Oh. And you know what? Even in there, there's still one seed left. And I'm going to make sure that it's the last one. We're going to leave that there because he didn't uprooted the plant. Somebody say uproot that thing. Uproot that thing. Yes, it's gone. It is gone. And so the last thing that he needed to uproot before you can have an intimate relationship with him is legalism. And we're going to leave that there. We're just going to have a moment of silence on that as well. <laughs> so I'm going to move this over. So we have this demonstration here. And um, what we're going to do is, I'm going to just demonstrate. After you have uprooted all these things, now what? Okay? So we have three things, important things that God wants to uproot today. While you're going, not today, but while you're going through this conference and you're listening and you're hearing the speaker, these are the three important things that he wants to uproot for you during this conference. One is going to be a faulty belief system about homosexuality. Then he's going to want to uproot religion and culture, and church culture, I'm sorry, and legalism. And then the third thing he wants to uproot is trauma. So as you're processing with the Lord through this um, conference, ask the Lord to show you what areas of my heart are still rooted in trauma or rooted in religion or rooted in faulty belief systems about homosexuality. So these are just some of the faulty beliefs that you could have. People who practice homosexuality can't change. We know that's a lie. God hates people who identify as LGBTQ. We know that's a lie. People are born gay. We know that's a lie, and I think we have some speakers that are going to prove it this weekend. Um, your gender identity is based on how you feel. We know that's a lie. Experiencing same-sex attractions mean you're gay. We know that's a lie. <laughs> Homosexuality is an unforgivable sin. Faulty belief, that is a lie. The Bible doesn't teach against homosexuality. We know that's a lie. I hope you all do. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. <laughs> Um, and that the gay community often uses this phrase, but that love is love. And we know that the word says that God is love. And love has a name. And love has a definition. It's not just anything you want it to be. And so we're going to uproot that. I want you all to say uproot that thing. Uproot that thing. So we're going to uproot faulty belief systems. The second thing we're going to uproot this weekend is religion, church culture. To some of the things that we could be rooted in, um, that being a meaning that being a Christian means God expects perfection. We know that God gives us grace; He doesn't expect to perfect perfection. Although He wants to perfect our faith and perfect us, He doesn't expect us to strive for perfection, to please Him, to receive His love and ex and um, experience Him. Um, religion lacks discipleship. We need to be discipled. We need to learn how to follow Christ and how to submit our, our flesh to him. We need to learn how to walk in intimacy with the Lord. Um, and just a few you guys can read through being carnal-minded. And the last one, so this is a joke between my dad and I. He doesn't really go to church anymore, so I always says he's at Bedside Baptist. And he, call, <laughs> and he calls it the CME Saints, which are the People who go to church only on Christmas, Mother's Day, or Easter. And so, if you are part of Bedside Baptist Church or you are a CME saint, we want to. Yes. <laughs> and then the third thing. So, I just want to say, uprooting religious looks like 
developing an intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ, getting healthy discipleship, learning to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We want to be able to cultivate the fruits of the spirit through discipleship so that when you are rooted and grounded in love, you will be able to produce the fruit that is healthy and beautiful. Um, and so the last thing we want to uproot is trauma. So if you resonate, everyone knows their personal trauma and the things that they experienced as a child or as an, in their teenage years or even when they were in a lifestyle. And those are the things that God wants to uproot. We have abandonment, rejection in the womb. A parent was divorced, um, have an emotionally developed parent. So when it comes to trauma, we're going to say, <laughs> yes. So I'm going to skip down, actually, because I don't have that much more time. So I'm going to skip down to what it looks like to be rooted and grounded in love and show a fruitful tree. So if you could go. So look how beautiful that looks. Doesn't look peaceful compared to the other one. The other one looked like so much chaos and confusion. So we have God is love. So really, if we know that God is love, we're saying being rooted and grounded in love. We're really saying being rooted and grounded in God. And so what does that look like now? We have uprooted all of our trauma, and God wants to, he is the potter. He wants to reshape us and remold us and give us a new vessel that is white as snow. And then he wants to, we're going to have some soil in here, okay? So we're going to get some new potting soil because we want this soil to be moist. We don't want it to fall on rocky ground. We, want, we don't want the word of God to fall in an area that we can't receive or be choked. So we have some fresh soil here. And we're gonna just pat that down. And I actually bought some seeds. Now I thought this was in really cute. So the brand of these seeds are called Seeds of Change. So I thought that was really sweet. And it was like the only, packet of flowers there. So I don't know what kind of flowers these are, but we're going to, we're going to, they're seeds of change. That's what we're going to call them. So we have some new seeds here. We have, we're just going to say this, God, love, wholeness, everything in there. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yes, Lord. It's all good, all of that. And so we're going to put some more soil in there so they can get good and covered and protected so that it can be healthy. And then we're going to be reestablished. Our foundation is going to be reestablished in love. And then we're going to what? We're going to get connected in a church body where we can be fed, yeah. where God can send people to come water those seeds. Yeah. We're going to uh, find healthy relationships. We're going to learn how to walk in the spirit. And we're just going to watch ourselves grow. The, the Bible says that one, God sends one to plant the seeds. He sends another to water the seeds, and it is God who gives the increase. Yeah. So we're just going to, that seed is going to be nice and watered, and it's going to grow, and it is spilling over. So I'm gonna, <laughs> like I said, well, we're, guess what? Listen, our cup is overflowing, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So... So, yeah, so here we are. And if you look on your tables, everyone <laughs> has a nice, beautiful plant that has grown and flourished. And we can now produce the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. We have power over sin. Amen. We have goodness. We have long suffering. We have wholeness. We have the fullness of God. We have self control. We have the promises of God. If you remember the scripture in Ephesians, it said, being rooted and grounded in love, that you may obtain the fullness of God. All that He is, everything that He has, you will be able to obtain that through being rooted and grounded in love. We have gentleness, obedience abundance and look at what's crawling up that tree branch before it was pride now we have what humility yes God is so amazing we have faithfulness love peace and it just looks so peaceful the fruit is so vibrant and it just looks like it's just a peace the other one was so chaotic and we have the promises of God there so I just want to go through this last slide and then I'm going to play a video and I will wrap up. So let's just say when we're being rooted and grounded in love, what does that mean? What does God do, love does for uh, do for us? 
what does that look like tangibly? So we know his love heals, his love protects, his love never ends, his love is faithful. It helps us, it's a refuge for our hurts and our pains and our trauma. It's a refuge for our secrets. Um, his love makes us whole. His love is compassionate. His love is forgiving. forgiving. His love helps us, his love disciplines us. His love is merciful. So when we are rooted and grounded in love, even if you've never struggled in homosexuality, if you're ministering to those, these are the fruits of God's love that you need to be displaying. We're talking about how to display love to a community that have been rooted in deception and, and um, rejection and abandonment. So we need to take on the characteristics of God and be a refuge. We need to be... Um, we need to uh, cover sins. The word says that love covers a multitude of sin. So instead of exposing who did what and how they look and what sin they're in, God says, no, cover. Okay? And so we need to make sure that we're carrying those characteristics. Um, so when you are rooted and grounded in love, you're able to produce the fruits of the Spirit. You're able to obtain wholeness, overcome struggles, develop more intimacy with the Father. You're able to find your identity and build healthy relationships. And most importantly, you're able to walk in the fullness of God's promises. Amen. So I'm going to wrap this up. I want to, I, do I have like two more minutes? Okay. So I want to just read this scripture. It was too long to place here, but I'm going to pull it up because it was so powerful. Um, it says, it's in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 21. And it's kind of lengthy, but it's really good. And I'm going to be reading from the message version. This is what the Lord gave me. It's, the title says, God is love. My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God, because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he once upon a time loved us. It doesn't really say that part. I just had to add it because it sounds cute. <laughs> but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. No one has seen God ever. But if we love one another, God dwells deeply within us and his love becomes complete in us. Perfect love. This is how we know we're living steadily and deeply in him. And he and he in us. He's given us life from his life, from his very own spirit. Also, we've seen for ourselves and continue to state openly that the Father sent his Son as a Savior of the world. Everyone who confesses that Jesus is God's Son participates continuously in an intimate relationship with God. We know it so well, we've, we've embraced it, heart and soul, this love that comes from God. So that is um, just, whew, I don't even have to preach on that. You know, that was just like, when he showed me that, I, I was in tears because that was just like everything. It sums it all up for us, right? So I just want you all, I want to show a video to wrap things up. And um, it's just going to just let it marinate, let the Lord speak to you and have a time of worship and quiet with him. We also, at our resource table, once we finish, I have some little, uh, post-it notes and little boxes that says give it to God and you can write if there are things that you're struggling to uproot you can write it and there's a trash can in there you can ball it up as a seed put it in a trash can and I will pray over them personally and those connected to my ministry so if you need help uprooting those things write them on the paper put them in the in the bucket there and we will pray for you okay thank you so much for having me